Welcome back. We will now get you a slice of various top voices in the Indian and the global markets when it comes to technologies, EVs, global demand for crude oil and of course prices going forward. We are very excited about the announcements of the so-called R, R series, the $6 billion of commitment to develop gas in sure. India. And we see gas as a huge enabler of the development of India and in fact an enabler of the development of renewable in energy in Indi India. One of the big problems, and I'll get to your second part of your question next, mm -hmm. is that um, especially power supply in the world is becoming increasingly variable when you have wind or solar. It's not always there when you want it. And even on the demand side, especially if you move to electrification of transport, you've potentially got increasingly variable demand. And so that gets the question about how do you balance the two. Gas has a, an, a, an incredible capability to be flexible and to balance power systems. So that's an important enabler of the overall direction, I think, of energy in India. Fair point. Specifically on the point of our uh, agreement, uh, joint venture and memorandum of understanding with Reliance Industries, um, th there are probably five areas that we're particularly looking at possibilities with them. Mm -hmm. um, I'll try and remember them all, run through them f with, for you. Thank so you. that's bioproducts, advanced mobility, mm -hmm. digital platforms, carbon management and power and storage of electricity. Um, so those are the areas that we're looking at possibilities and we do certainly see that India is a place where we can try out new technologies, um, pilot them, proofs of concepts and working with uh, Reliance, our partner, who obviously know India very well, mm -hmm. uh, we feel that we can bring exciting opportunities, products and services to customers here in India and help to provide solutions to the challenges that certainly exist in moving as rapidly as the leaders would like towards a more sustainable energy future in India. Okay, keeping with that, uh, we are seeing the Indian government really bet big on, you know, uh, going carbon negative of sorts and moving on to an electric vehicle kind of uh, mobility space. Mm. And you happen to mention both, uh, you know, technologies for storage uh, of, uh, as well as, you know, moving on to mobility and mm. exploring both <coughs> these partnerships here in India. So is uh, EVs the way forward and, you know, how much is BP really going to be looking at the EV market, if at all? So we certainly do see uh, electrification of transport as a very exciting trend globally and BP intends to invest in that trend in, around, around the world and to enable that trend. Mm -hmm. If I can just step back and do a little bit of physics first. Sure. Um, energy density really matters and if you're small and you're doing small repeatable distances like a golf cart, it's really easy to electrify uh, and it's actually quite cost effective. Absolutely. If you're very big and very heavy, you want to fly or you're a ship or a big truck, it's much, much harder to use a battery mm -hmm. to power you because batteries have got about 1% of the energy density of gasoline or jet fuel or diesel or whatever. Sure. So uh, our view is that in India, there's a huge pot potential to electrify transport, but it's much easier to start at the lighter end of the True. spectrum. And in fact, in two and three wheelers, where India is quite unique, 80% of all the vehicles, mm -hmm. uh, light duty vehicles here, are two and three wheelers. True. That seems to us, to us to be a very exciting area to start. From a technology standpoint, we're kind of at a very unique point in history, not just in India, but globally. Mm -hmm. But it clearly applies here because of the new initiatives um, and that's around the area of digitization, which is a hard word to say. <laughs> <laughs> but um, what we're finding is great improvements in overall performance, safety, reliability, uptime, uh, particularly if we look at the upstream. Mm. And so a lot of dialogue here about the upstream and, uh, and the need for India to use more of its own oil, its own gas, and how can that be more productive? So we've been in those discussions. Mm. You know, uh, uh, there have been various people for Sarah Week here and almost everybody has been talking about on how there is a lot of encouragement and funds which is waiting to come into India. And it really seems to be spread around everywhere from technology to infrastructure to strategic partnerships, if I may say so. Where do you see the priority for the investments right now? Well, it's, it's true that the government of India is aggressively reaching out and it brings us here. And uh, it was interesting, at the Houston Sarah Week meeting, the, indig the ministries uh, were there, the Minister of Petroleum especially, 
and he said we must have this meeting here mm -hmm. and brought it so the fact that the government is being out reaching is helpful um, but I really think uh, as work is done and the concern that I raised yesterday overall with India is many of the designs are using technology that was 10 years old and you're going to get 10 year old results mm. and there's an opportunity right now to reconsider and rethink and the basis of it is the analytics and the optimization that can be done now with big data and you've heard all these things in the news over and over again but they actually work um, we were able to uh, have a discussion with Saudi Aramco mm. here uh, and they now have the most reliable refinery in the world running in Jabal. Well, how did they do that? And what analytics were put in place? And you compare that to some of the designs that are going forward in India. Mm. They're not using the newest and best ideas. And so we'd like those to be considered by the ministry and by uh, the different entities in India. We are quite upbeat on Kochi because uh, there has been a time of lull in Kochi, but now as I'm talking to you today, we are utilizing the terminal by nearly 15-16%, which has put us into, at this point of time, at least in operating profits. Mm -hmm. And uh, overall in the first phase, everybody knows that the pipeline connected was around 45-47 kilometers. Mm -hmm. And with that, we are today actually doing nearly around 3 plus million cubic meters of gas across uh, we are giving gas to uh, BPCL uh, refinery mm -hmm. and uh, to the FACT fertilizer plant. And the good news is that uh, the connectivity from Kochi to Mangalore, sure. which is around 440 kilometers, have now been awarded. Mm -hmm. Gale is doing that pipeline. And uh, out of that, nearly 100 kilometers has really been done and mm -hmm. over with. And I expect that in 2018 calendar year, uh, we should be in a position to get the line commissioned. Although Gale is, uh, I would say, slightly conservative. They say that it will be in 2019 Q1. But you believe calendar. But I believe, of... yes. I believe that and being a part of Gale earlier also, I feel that they have the capacity to do it earlier. Mm -hmm. So I am optimistic that by the end of the calendar year, we should be utilizing nearly 40% of the capacity of Kochi Terminal. The Prime Minister met the global leaders as well as the domestic producers of oil and gas and has uh, uh, has said that there should be increase in gas and oil uh, production in India. So where does uh, Kane Vedanta's production stand and what is the aim in terms of increasing production? Well, our mission has been to take it up to 500,000 barrels a day. Mm -hmm. And we are currently at 200. And we are, uh, as you know, we've been stating in the recent past, uh, at the inflection point where we would be making investments to raise production mm -hmm. by at least uh, 100 to 150,000 uh, barrels a day in the short term. Mm -hmm. So we are in the process, we, you know, the projects have been conceptualized, they've been approved by the DGH, etc. And we are in the process of the contracting and we expect uh, the contracting uh, process to finish by end of December for sure before the year is out and get into full scale in some of them earlier and we expect to get into execution from November onwards. Okay. What kind of investment can we expect since you are aiming at 500,000 barrels a day? Okay. Some of it is exploration led, so, you know, it's very difficult to answer those questions. You've mm -hmm. started exploration on the KG off offshore as well mm -hmm. and some in Rajasthan. Uh, but in terms of, you know, the way we look at it, it's going to be at least in the region of about 3 billion over the next three to four years. The government is looking at integrated energy policy and has also sought the global leaders as well as the domestic producers to put in the money. So in terms of taxation, how do you see the retrospective tax issue which has been there with the parent company, the erstwhile parent company, how does that uh, hi um, hinder the process of investment in this sector of energy? Look, I think retrospective tax has nothing to do with oil and gas. It's, you know, it's sector agnostic yes. issue that the government is, uh, mm -hmm. you know, facing and trying to address it. And clearly retrospective, anything with the word retrospective mm -hmm. is, uh, is never a good thing, mm -hmm. you know, because, to attract investment in. Mm -hmm. So I think, they are, you know, the process is on to find a resolution around this. Uh, 
but that i don't think is gets into the way of making investments into the future we are quite confident of government's uh, you know uh, fiscal policy uh, it, you know i mean we argue that it's it's you know the oil prices are low mm -hmm. and the fiscal policy needs to tune itself uh, you know on, on not the policy but the terms and conditions of new investments need to be in line uh, with with you know shareholders need to have some economic return on it and oil and gas is a very risky business unfortunately we end up seeing only companies that survive it's a winner takes it all yeah. but you could go under the table any day and lots of companies have gone well that's all that we have from sarah week today thank you so much for watching